This video is going to focus on the three different types of materials that we see erupting from a volcanic eruption. The first thing that's being released during eruption is lava. And the big difference in our different types of lava is the chemical composition, whether it's felsic, mafic, or intermediate. We see that about 90% of the lava being released at our surface is mafic. This is really lucky for us because this mafic lava is the one that produces really gentle lava flows. The lava is so thin and so hot, it's going to flow into really thin, broad covering sheets or ribbons of lava. We see that most of this lava is coming out of our divergent boundaries in our seafloor, so it's not actually erupting out of a volcano like we would expect. But because this lava is so thin and so hot, it's capable of traveling up to 20 miles per hour downhill. We see that about 9% of all the lava that's erupted towards the surface on our planet is intermediate. And these are the ones that we're going to find around the edges of our continents, around those volcanoes that are going to release porphyritic igneous rocks. And finally, about 1% of all the lava that erupts at the surface is felsic. Thankfully, this is only 1% because this felsic lava is the one that produces really violent, explosive, and deadly eruptions because the lava is so thick and so full of dissolved gases that it literally explodes. But once we have lava on the surface, it's going to flow in two different ways, being ah ah or pahoy hoy, depending on how warm it is. So both of these terms are indigenous terms. Ah ah comes from Indonesia, and it's called this because it's really like rough, jagged blocks of lava that have cooled into igneous rocks with incredibly sharp edges. It's called ah ah because before there were shoes, if you tried to walk across this after it cooled down, it would cut your feet, making you go ah ah. Literally, I'm not making this up. The reason why it's so thick and jagged is because it is a colder flow. It's not going to flow as easily. The second major way that lava can flow on the surface is called pahoy hoy. And this is where it forms really smooth, ropey surfaces. I think of this as like if you've ever gotten soup from a buffet, but they haven't stirred the soup in a while, and that thin, ropey film develops at the surface. This is how I see pahoy hoy, which is the image on the right. This is a much hotter lava flow, so the lava is going to be able to flow around much easier than an ah uh ah -uh lava flow would. But in, in addition to lava, volcanoes are also releasing gases when they erupt. And when gases are dissolve, dissolved inside of magma, we call them volatiles. Something that's volatile just reacts very quickly and unexpectedly. So we're going to see that the gases are actually dissolved inside of the magma because it's under so much pressure inside of our planet. But once we start releasing that pressure, like when the volcano erupts or when we remove the top of our soda, it's going to allow the dissolved gases to start expanding. We're going to start seeing bubbles rise to the surface. And in volcanoes, we're going to see that there are three major abundant gases. There are way more than these three, but we're just going to focus on the most common, which are water vapor, carbon dioxide, and sulfur dioxide. And all three of these are going to contribute to the atmosphere because water vapor and carbon dioxide are greenhouse gases. They warm up our planet. And sulfur dioxide is full of sulfur, so it's going to be pretty stinky. But the third major thing that a volcano can erupt during eruption is a pyroclastic material. And again, these are just materials that form whenever we have an explosion. So instead of having lava flow, the volcano is going to explode when it erupts. And we're going to see that we can name the type of pyroclastic material based on its size. 
volcanic ash and dust are going to be very fine particles. Think about the ash that's left behind after a fire. Larger than that, we have welded tuff. And this, we're actually going to be able to see individual pieces of like glass shards inside of it from that eruption. Even larger than that, we have lapelli and cinders. And these are things that are smaller than our hand. But we can also get pretty large pyroclastic materials as well. Things like blocks and bombs. But we can also have two common igneous rocks that form here as well. And these are both vesicular, meaning that they cool off so quickly that those dissolved gases can't escape. So it's going to be full of air holes. And the two types are scoria and pumice. Scoria is the mafic equivalent, whereas pumice is the felsic equivalent. But they both cool down and turn into solid rock so quickly, they're just full of those dissolved gases.